Welcome to the Logistics Point interviews. We are joined by Lion Closer from Four Kites, who is the Global Director of Customer Success there. And we're going to talk about maritime and the maritime market. Ryan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the conversation. How would you evaluate the maritime market in 2022? Uh, in one word, chaotic, right? So, you know, we started 2022, um, it was almost all time highs when it came to cost of containers. It started with incredible demand and low supply and very quickly that slid and it became a situation with excess supply and minimal demand. COVID lockdowns in China, that was a huge part of, of the exports and you know that was driving huge volume into the ports and suddenly it stops and they are not exporting the goods that they're exporting. So you layer that in and you know if you look at the, the West Coast ports of the United States, there was a huge backlog, right? There was 150 ships off the coast of LA. Suddenly they're working through that backlog. And a lot of that is because there were fewer ships that were coming in. So it's allowing them to do that. The Ukraine-Russian conflict, right? That caused all kinds of chaos across the globe, um, sourcing goods from different locations. There was labor issues in Germany. There were labor issues potentially bubbling on the West Coast of the United States. I mean, these are all injections of uncertainty in what was already a very uncertain market. So things have somewhat stabilized at this point to so the back half of the year. Um, you know, the costs what we're seeing right now are just a little bit above baseline of what they were in 2019. So you're seeing a little bit of stability. If you think about one of the positives that, that came out of both 2021 and 2022, um, there's a push towards visibility, right? So People need to know where their goods are. Um, how long is it going to take for my goods to be loaded at the port? How long are they going to be on the water? How long are they going to be sitting off the port of discharge? And when are they going to be available for pickup? For a, quite some time, nobody had that visibility. It was just hoping that it was going to arrive in time. And sometimes it takes 10 days to come you know, from China to the U.S. Sometimes it takes 75, 100 days before you can pick your goods up. So the ability to have access and collaborate, I think, was one of the positives that came out of, you know, what was not necessarily the smoothest year when it came to maritime transportation. I also want to, to look into a, a bit of a different perspective here, which is maritime and sustainability. Do you think that there has been a sort of a positive move forward? Uh, potentially a little bit, but it's those steamship lines are one of the largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. And if, you know, if you were to look into the future and you look at companies who are saying, you know, China shut down, we couldn't get the goods we needed, maybe we nearshore now instead of offshoring our production, that could potentially lead to reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Um, when the boats move slower, that also could reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. But if the boats are just idling off the coast, and waiting to get unloaded, that's not going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So sustainability is the forefront of everybody's mind right now. But at the same time, there was a big focus on, I need my goods here now. And sustainability took a bit of a backseat to the shelves are empty. We need to make sure that we know that we've got the goods that consumers need. And that was at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Is it possible to predict what will happen in 2023? I think stability would be the key word moving through the year. I don't think that we're going to see a huge uptick in consumer demand. Metrics point to a soft economy, you know, potentially the, the recession word has been thrown around right in you know, Q1, Q2 of next year. Um, if consumer demand remains soft, then you will see less demand for goods, you know, being imported, being exported, being shipped around the globe. All it takes is one of these black swan events to happen again, and it could throw everything into complete chaos like it was in 2021 and a little bit of 2022, uh, most of 2022. We're on a path towards stability when it comes to capacity, supply, demand. We really are one or two events away from being right back where we were and, and you know, having to deal with the chaotic nature of you know, the ocean container costs going through the roof and, you know, the products not being on the shelf that we need. So um, I think if anything, you know, 2021 and 22 
taught us is that we need to build resiliency into our supply chains and and be aware that there there are domino effects that could happen and it's going to cause you know ripple effects and chaos throughout the supply chain in terms of shippers and carriers how do you think they will change their behavior i think that you will see closer collaboration between shippers and carriers when it comes to demand planning and you know, there's it's cyclical right there's times where the carrier has the power there's times when the shipper has the power but it it it, it ebbs and it flows right and so we're seeing more collaboration between the two parties and it, it's less of that um you know potential conflicting relationship where it's you know the carriers have the power the cost is going to be super high we're going to gouge you shipper and you know it comes to that level of 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 homeostasis more or less it, it, this could all change we've seen this happen before where everybody says you know, you sit around the campfire and you sing the happy song and let's all get along together and then it changes and that relationship the balance of power changes and shifts for a while what we've seen if you look back you know 20 30 years it always comes you know it, it ebbs and it flows and it's never a stable um power dynamic between carriers and shippers so um we're seeing more collaboration i think we'll continue to see collaboration and you know it, it pun intended you know the rising tide lifts all ships at this point so working together is going to be a positive thing is there a specific region where you think things would really be challenging or maybe on the other hand a specific region where things wouldn't be as bad as anywhere else every region is affected by so many things if we didn't have the ukraine russia conflict i would say that e emia in general would be in a better position than say Asia because Asia is dealing with the lockdowns and the US imports so many goods from Asia that that's an issue as well right so i i don't think that anybody is necessarily going to be saved if there is pain coming coming through for whether it's a recession or a capacity crunch i think that everybody is regionally you know in this and should be concerned if something does happen Ryan, thank you very much for your time. And everyone watching can learn a bit more about four kites and the future and present of maritime, the maritime sector, in the description below. Thank you very much.